All right, guys, welcome back to another EVE Online episode video. Today we're going to focus on this Navy issue, Caracal. It's probably one of the most visually appealing cruisers in the game. Um, we're going to be running Tier 2 Electrical Abysses with this. The fit that I prepared is actually simplified down to where you should be able to fit this with very low skills. There's no Tech 2 modules whatsoever on here. There are maybe one or two faction modules, but they're not highly expensive. Then most of the training that you'll probably have to complete to be able to sit in the Caracal will probably be just for the cruiser itself. So we'll start with the uh, with the highs. And in the highs we have the prototype Arbalist rapid light missile launchers. We have those loaded up with Kaldari Navy Neonor light missiles giving us a max flight range of 39 kilometers all total running us somewhere around 370 dps with the two drones that are fitted now your drones are mainly going to be used for reaching out and getting the the nodes just to pop them um, you can also use them for some small smaller rats as well so in the mids we have our 10 men YSB compact afterburner, two medium clarity ward enduring shield boosters, each of them cranking out 119 HP bonus per three seconds. Now this is going to be a little bit different for you depending upon your shield um, skills. Uh, same with the with the highs and the DPS that you're actually going to get out of your missile launchers. Then we have a stalwart restrained shield boost amplifier to amplify the boost that we're getting here. We have an enduring multi-spectrum shield hardener and a Republic Fleet medium cap battery. Now it's important to point out that our capacitor uh, depletes in two minutes. It is not cap stable sitting here in the dock, which is why we're going to run this in an electrical. If we run the electrical filament, we will be cap stable and able to run all of our modules at the same time and not deplete our capacitor and be a sitting duck. So in the lows, we have cross-link compact ballistic control systems times two, and we have an IFFA compact damage control. Drone-wise, I loaded it up with two Imperial Navy infiltrators. Typically I go with Vespas, but I'm also usually running exotic filaments. For the electrical, we're going to have reduced EM resistance so we want to have something that's pushing out the EM damage onto the rats. Cargo wise the fit that I have um, in the description below does not have this Magpie mobile <laughs> tractor unit because it's a 300 million is tractor unit um, but I wanted to play with that today. Uh, in the fit below we actually just have a regular a regular tractor unit. Um, we've got our tier 2 electrical filaments and a few thousand of our missiles. We also have two implants. Uh, we have a Squire capacitor management and a snapshot light missile, uh, the LM903. I have these, they're in the fit that's listed below. 145 million will buy you everything from the regular tractor unit to the ship to the implants. Everything's included in the fit. I would, however, advise you that if you haven't ran tier ones, I would advise you to start this in a tier one and then work your way up to tier two. But we are going to go ahead and jump right into a tier two with it. I've already tested this fit a couple times. Let's see what it can do. So we'll jump over here to Aya Norsta to a 0.8 system where we can actually pop a filament. I really enjoy the look of this ship. Um, I wish there was some way to get this to where it would run a tier three or a tier four. And maybe that's something we'll work on in a future video. I'm not sure if it's possible for a tier four or not. If it is it will be an extraordinarily expensive fit. Okay, so now we're in place. We'll go ahead and pop one of these filaments. Now the first route we're going to be watching for is we're going to watch for anything that's going to drain capacitor. I also want to show you the fit once we get in here. So you can see that the capacitor is stable. I believe it's stable at like 6%, so you still don't want to leave everything on. Oh, this is going to be a little bit of a tough one anyway. Yeah, so we're stable at 11%. Okay, so 
the first thing we're going to do is we'll go ahead and we'll start up the uh, shield hardener, one shield booster, and then uh, the afterburner. We're going to burn off to go orbit the uh, transfer conduit. So we'll start grabbing a couple of targets here. And as soon as we have them in range. These blast scopes most likely will hit hard. Close to our conduit, we'll go ahead and we'll drop out the tractor beam. Our module has run out of charges. And then we're going to start heading towards this other extraction node. back too late we lost one these blast scopes are really hard on drones now we get this node targeted we'll go ahead and free the other drone back out send him over that way and we're going to pull back to orbit the Global tractor unit. You know. Right. Now that all the enemies are dealt with, we'll reload the launchers. Shields are full, we can turn that off. Let our capacitor uh, charge all the way up. And retrieve our one remaining drone. having that sitting at 2 million that's not too bad because it's not actually an accurate representation of what you got from this. Um, we're in the test server so everything except for the triglavian surveys are going to come back as 100 disk apiece. So we're actually sitting at more than 2 mil. We'll run everything to Eve Praisal at the end and see what kind of a total we got so we can see what type of uh, disk per hour it's, it's looking at making. Now, there's a lot of people that do not bother to get the nodes in a tier 2. They only run for the bioadaptive cache. Um, which is my experience is, is about right. Um, it's really not typically worth taking the extra time. Alright, so there we go. Loot all. Always remember to drag, grab your tractor unit. And let's head towards the gate. OK, 
Okay, so we have a deep watch here. And we're going to do basically the same thing. Fire up the same units that we done turned off. We're going to head and orbit the conduit. Grab some targets here. Uh, we're going to start most likely with this Lancer. And then we're going to take out the Lucid Escort. And we'll get our drones started popping their targets. Alright, and now we have everything taken care of except for the Deep Watcher. We're going to go ahead and kick the other booster on. Throw this uh, tractor unit out. Start heading closer to these. Nodes. Looks like our shields are holding pretty steady, so we'll go ahead and turn off the other booster. Now, unfortunately, I'm not sure why um, my range, my control range is so low. Perhaps it might be because I'm not using uh, Drone Link Augmenter. That may be the problem. Let's go ahead and stick our drone over here. We're going to fall back to the Magpie in orbit. While we reload yet again. These reload times are really the biggest drawback to this fit, and probably what increases the uh, completion time. But we're not looking bad. We're still staying to under under five minutes per room, and that's with getting all the nodes. So pretty good. Okay, we're reloaded. Uh, first, maybe we should switch targets. There we go. Let's see if we can finish this guy off without another reload. I have a feeling he has a high EM resistance to begin with. Let's check and see. He has high everything resistance on that armor. So now we're through the armor, he should go down fairly quickly. Let's go ahead and call the drone in. Got three more shots, and we're going to reload. No luck. Go check, see what kind of goodies we got while we wait. We can go ahead and grab the tractor unit. And be waiting at the gate when he goes down. Looks like 1.9 mil. Of course, like I said, that's just... 
It's just the Triclavian surveys. It's not counting anything else. Okay, reloaded. Let's finish it off. Okay, we're through the gate. One room to go. This one shouldn't be too bad. Same principles. Head to the conduit. Grab targets. Typically I try to go for the Rediva first, just because it's going to make it harder to kill everything else. But these striking Kikamoras, they're no joke, you really got to kind of watch them. So he will probably be the next one we want to take. Okay, go ahead and target our other interests here. Oh, it looks like this is a starving Damovic. I didn't even notice that to begin with. So he's actually... I thought it was a striking. A module has run out of charges. I'm going to feed the drone, try to finish the Rodiva. And then we'll send him one over to the node here. DPS out of him to do that. Maybe. I think he will finish it off. There we go. Alright, we'll send him to the node. We now have missiles loaded. Let's hit this starving Damovic, take him out real fast. He should sink fairly easily. And then we'll get this striking Kikamora out of the way. We'll go ahead and throw out our tractor unit. Switch our orbit to go around it. And the rest should be gravy. Comes the drone in to pop the bioadaptive cache. And the Kikimura is down. Reload missiles. Recall the drone. Head into the tractor unit here and see what we got. So far we're sitting on a mill. Now one of the biggest tricks to running these is to not get greedy. It was something that I was told when I first started running bigger ones and it's, uh, it's not a joke. If you're getting pushed on time, if you're over your five minutes per run, per room, um, go ahead and leave, it, leave that last node because it's not worth losing the entire ship over or even the tractor unit. Alright, so there's two mil distance surveys. We'll go ahead and grab all this stuff. Grab our tractor unit. Head through the origin gate. We stack all of these. Select all. We'll unselect that. Unselect that. And unselect those. I'm going to copy them. So right now in Jita, uh, the estimated buy value, if you just went and you sold everything immediately, you're looking at 9.25 million in, it, in loot. So that's pretty good. 10 mil, I think that's a little high. I think the average is around six. 
So if you ran six mil, uh, we had about 15 minutes in that one. So you're looking at well over, I don't know, maybe approximately 25 mil an hour. So 25 mil an hour within six hours of gameplay. If you don't lose the ship, you got it paid off. You're making pure profit. So that's today's video. I hope you enjoyed. You know, if you did, like, subscribe, leave a comment. Also, I stream every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will leave the link in the description. Feel free to stop over and, and catch us. We run a lot of different abysses. Till the next video, fly safe.